Hi friends. Hi. Welcome back to another episode and we're very glad that Meredith is here with us this time. Today we want to talk to you about Dave Ramsey's seven baby steps and why they didn't really work for us and they might not work for you if you're in a similar situation. So to start I'm going to cover Dave's seven baby steps just so you have an idea of what they are. So number one is to save $1,000 as a starter emergency fund. So you wanna to try to save that money up as quickly as you can. It's just a rainy day fund. So get it in the bank and forget about it. Number two is to pay off all your debts except for your house with the debt snowball. Yeah, and so the way the debt snowball works is you're gonna make a list of all of the debts that you currently have with the smallest remaining balance at the top and the highest remaining balance at the bottom. So the snowball effect comes when you've paid off the loan at the top, you're gonna use the money you had been paying towards that loan to tackle the next one. Yep, your monthly payment is gonna get larger with each debt. Number three is to save three to six months expenses in a fully funded emergency fund. All right, so this one's really important because if somebody were to lose their job, you wanna be able to have replaceable income or say something goes really wrong, like you need a big car repair or something like that. Number four is to invest 15% of your gross income into retirement. All right, so this can be things like a 401k or a Roth IRA, and generally you wanna start with a 401k. Number five is to save for your children's college fund. Number six is to pay off your home early. Right, and this is Dave's favorite baby step, well, second favorite baby step <laughs> behind number seven, but that's imagining a life without a mortgage or rent payment. And then number seven, which Nick said is Dave's favorite, is to finally build wealth and be super generous. Yeah, so you don't have any more debts to pay off, your retirement is secure, your children's college is secure, so now you can just do whatever the heck you want with your money, which is pretty much the whole point of having money. So after discussing with a financial advisor and talking amongst ourselves, trying to decide what our financial goals were, we realized that Dave's baby steps weren't a perfect fit for us, and you might find that that's the same for you, you might not. So now we're gonna run through our own baby steps so that you can see if maybe these would help you out along your financial journey as well. All right, so step one is unchanged. It's still $1,000 in the bank as a starter emergency fund. This is really important. Like he said earlier, just put it in the bank and be done with it. Yep. I didn't have to say yep, I'll cut that out. Okay. All right, so baby step two is to pay off all of your smaller debts. And what I mean by smaller is all of the debts that you could pay off within a six month time frame. Dave includes student loans here, but when you have student loans that are the size of a mortgage, it might cause you to rethink this step. So these smaller debts are anything that you can pay off in about six months. Credit card debt, car payments, other sorts of smaller loans or things with really high interest rates would be good to pay off here. And that can all be done by still following the debt snowball idea. Once you have all of your high interest and low remaining balances paid off, you wanna start contributing to an emergency fund. You wanna get that up to about three to six months of your expenses. We chose to go with more closer to the three month range because we're pretty young, we're pretty marketable. As in, if we lost our jobs, we could find a new one relatively quickly. Hopefully not at the same time. We yeah. wouldn't lose our jobs at the same That'd time. That'd be bad. Hopefully not, yeah. <laughs> so the amount of time that you want to put into your emergency fund is really just how much risk you wanna take yourself. All right, baby step four is to invest in a 401k if you get an employer match. We would have had to wait a really long time to get to this step, but we wanted to take advantage of Nick's employer match. Yeah, my employer matches 5% if I contribute 6% of my income. So that actually comes out to 11% of my income. Now that's not 11, that's not 11 of our household income, but it still is at least something. Step five is the one that we are currently on right now for us, that is to pay off our student loans early. So you guys know our plan for that. It's gonna take us a little over two years, but we're well on our way. We have a plan in place. All right, so that's it for our modifications. After you've done all of that and you've paid off your student loans, hopefully the only large debt you have is a mortgage if you're a homeowner and you can continue on with Dave's baby steps starting at number four, which if you rewind the video, you'll remember is <laughs> investing 15% of your household income into retirement savings. All right, so that's it. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. If you have some questions on Dave's baby steps or our baby steps, feel free to give us a shout. We also have a little mini update to share. We were using Google Fi and they had a little bit of an issue that wasn't able to be resolved. And ultimately we had to switch carriers, which meant paying off my phone. So that was about a $400 
cost that we weren't expecting to have to pay at this time, but something that we decided needed to be done. <laughs> Luckily, we have a really great neighbor who was able to find us a great deal on a new phone plan, so it won't set us back too far. It's really not gonna set us back at all because now that the phone is paid off, and this bill is actually going to be really similar, actually less than what we were currently paying with the device payment, we'll actually end up saving that money in the long run. And so I don't think it's really gonna change our, our payoff plan at all. So now that's really it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's really important that we already funded our emergency fund um, and we have those backup funds in case something happens in these next two years. What backup funds do we have? We're just hiding money. <laughs> just cut that part out.